Okay, so today I have Mr. Saina Tosanta with me. Uh, he's working in a really big uh, firm here in Ireland and he has experience in a consultant and recruitment uh, related work. So he will give you insight about the recruitment uh, related things like the interview process or CV and all. So without wasting any time, let's just get started. So, uh, Sainath, you can just start the uh, introduction, uh, like uh, introduce yourself to my audience. Right. Thanks, Neil. Hello, everyone. My name is Sainath Vasanta, and I'm a senior consultant at EY Ireland. Before joining EY, I was working at Deloitte in Ireland, and I also work with Cognizant in the UK and in India. Uh, I don't want to bore you with all my uh, background and details. If you want more information about me, please feel free to reach, out, reach me out on LinkedIn with the same handle, sign at Vasanda. Uh, now I want to ask you the one thing that how the recruitment process is there in Ireland, like how the people are looking for a person and how you can make a job here in Ireland. The recruitment process in Ireland, uh, we can divide it into uh, two different types, right? So the first one is the graduate recruitment and then the second one is the experienced hires. So in this video, I would like to focus on the experienced hires. So um, if you are looking for a video about the graduate recruitment process, probably we'll make another video uh, shortly in the future. But this video will focus only on the experienced hire. As everybody know, basically the first step in the recruitment process is the CV screening. So uh, if you want to know more about uh, how to write a CV, please see Neil's video on how to write an Irish CV. So, uh, and we can do again, as I said, uh, in this video, we'll just focus on the interview process. So after you have gone through, after your CV has been shortlisted and then you have got the interview call, uh, ideally there will be three rounds, right? A minimum of two rounds. And then it, the number of rounds depends on the company. So suppose if you apply for a software engineer role in Apple, you'll have probably more than three rounds. But um, if you're talking about consulting companies like Deloitte or PwC, uh, EY, or any other company like Bank of America or MasterCard, which are not so heavily into software engineering roles, you'll probably have two to three rounds, right? And then the recruitment process is slightly different than India. So here, the first round will be with HR. And it's not about salary discussion, right? So the first round will generally be a telephonic interview. The HR will call you and then say, uh, it's more about uh, to know two things, right? The first thing is your communication skills. And second thing is how well you are presenting yourself to them. So this is the two things which the HR will look for when they call you for the first time. So it's important to make a good first impression. So uh, what kind of questions you can expect during the HR call? One question which you can definitely expect is, um, why did you apply for this job? Okay, so let's take an example. Let's say you, if, if you are a software, you have experience in testing, okay, in India, two to three years experience in testing. And then you came and did data science, okay? Okay, and then you applied a role in, again, testing, because this is an experienced hire, Yeah. okay? So they, then there is no point in talking about data science, okay? So you'll just say something relevant to that role. So always I, I suggest you to um, go through the job, job description perfectly and then take some key points out of it. Suppose let's say you applied for a, a testing role, right? So you will tell, I have three years of te experience in texting, okay? And then when I saw this role, I really liked that I will have an opportunity to really do what I like to do and love to do, which is testing, okay? And then um, when I saw your company, like, I mean, I, I did a little bit of research about your company and I talked to some of the colleagues. If you have talked to some of them before you got the HR call, that's great. Normally you'll have some friends working in the same company. You can mention them and say, I've talked to that guy. And then um, he told me that the culture there is very good. And then we have loads of um, learning opportunities and. Uh, they really help the employees to learn and grow. So this is what I'm looking for. So uh, just make it crisp. Just be in two to three points range. Uh, 
after this uh, in this video in the comments maybe i will uh, i have uh, two great youtube channels which i used which i always referred when i was applying for jobs so i will i will give that information to neil and then hopefully neil will uh, provide them so uh, these are great channels every time i went for an interview i referred them so basically like uh, in past 3 years in ireland i have applied for i have gone for eight interviews and out of them i have got six offers so uh, i always refer to those two youtube channels so those are great references for you know tell me about yourself challenging situations and all that kind of things people take it granted like uh, see i i know english i have been working for 3 to 4 years i can easily answer how to uh, tell me about yourself but no like always like always you need to be uh, refreshing about like in 6 months time if somebody asks you tell me about yourself it will be different yep okay so it's it's always good to refresh and then practice and then write it down um so just refer to those youtube channels and then um, go ahead so now the hr has asked you and you have told why um you applied for this role and another question they might ask you is uh, why did you come to ireland why did you choose this course okay because they are what they are really looking to see is did you move to ireland just to get a job like are you caring only about visa like and you don't this doesn't matter for you like or is it really something like you wanted to do in your life and that's why you came here to do that course okay so this is like super super important question i have been asked this question in each and every interview why did you come to ireland okay and then why did you choose this course in deloitte in ey in pwc in northern trust wherever i go this question has been asked okay and especially i am from it background and uh, i did masters in strategic management and planning okay so if somebody is has is doing masters in management or management consulting or business analytics which is not really exactly it they will definitely hear look for what they'll be waiting to hear what you will say okay yep. so again the idea is simple okay just give them what they want to hear right so related to the job so tell that so for example how i answered this question is um i have a background in it okay and or i'll put it this way um when i was working as a developer i always wondered how the business decisions were taken suppose let's say if you wanted to uh, if we have three projects in the pipeline and then uh, if we are doing project a first and then then project b i wanted to know how those business decisions are being taken by the project managers or the management team so this always uh, this is always something intrigued me and then when i was doing my research ucd was one of the universities where i found um, they have decision making techniques they have negotiation strategy they have project management all in one course that is strategic management and planning so that's why i chose ireland and once i completed my masters these skills which i acquired which are project management decision making techniques again don't tell too many things see here i am only telling three things decision making techniques project management and negotiation these three will help me directly in this role which is consulting in project uh, senior consultant okay there at client side always clients are making a dish, um, clients are presented with this problem will like with, where they have to make difficult decisions so the decision making techniques will help me to help those clients to make those make those decisions and we always negotiate with our clients daily rates or you know um, a project scope or something like that so i think uh, i have taken a good decision and this is why i taken this course and this is how this course will help me to perform better in this role which i applied for okay so you are completing the story so uh, similarly if you are applying for a data science job tell the same thing so i, I don't have experience in data science uh, i was always um, don't tell i don't have experience just say that i always learned uh, i always uh, wanted to learn data science okay and then i came and learned here and then put something like i have also done uh, just say one project maybe if that is relevant to the job and yeah. tell that 
this is how this it is helping you uh, this is how it will help you to better perform in that job which you applied for Perfect. and that's how you are completing the story and the hr will be impressed hopefully and um, uh, then she will put for, put you forward uh, to the hiring manager so normally how interview process work is before they don't want to waste uh, the um, hiring manager so hiring managers are not like in india there is no big separate hr department etc there are people like us you like you and me in five yeah. years time where they will be managers and they will be interviewing candidates and they are also working full time eight hours so yeah. they don't want to waste uh, hr do, don't want to waste so much of the time so they will do the pre screening and now the next round will most likely be uh, eight out of 10 times again it will be a telephonic round right uh, with a manager usually senior manager again it will be like mostly it will be half an hour phone call make yourself prepared okay and then go into a place where it is very silent and then most since most of you are doing masters you will be like sharing a room with somebody yeah. etc etc so um, like request your the best thing is book a time slot where everybody will be in college perfect okay so that you can take that day uh, you can take that day off and then nobody will disturb you if that is not possible then try to go to your friend's place like where only you can sit and then you can do the interview or request your friends to go downstairs or something like that basically yeah. the idea is uh, to be in a calm and you know noiseless environment for the interview for this one for the hr round it also it's the same but usually like hr will call you randomly okay oh, yeah like they won't ask you like what time is suitable for you they will call you and then they will ask you can i talk to you now okay okay perfect yeah unless and until you are in bus or something like that please don't say no because uh, I, i just wanted to say this thing because they might have like you know 10 to 15 candidates to go through and then you might not get the call yeah. back again right so right. anyway so um, for this one first the hr manage the process is like the hr manager will introduce himself right so i am blah 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 and then this is what we do etc and the first question is tell me about yourself okay yeah. so they have their uh, and this is why one important tip uh, which i wanted to give to all experienced candidates while writing their resume is do not fake it okay don't keep anything in the resume which you don't know okay Perfect. this is a very common practice in india and i also have done it okay even in ireland i don't have much experience in java or a full stack developer but when i was um, interviewed for deloitte uh, i was interviewed for deloitte two times the first time i didn't get the job uh, and then second time i got the job um, so first time i have put in so many things like python and then uh, java frameworks which i don't know and then uh, that spoiled my chances you know of getting an internship at deloitte um so i was first interviewed for intern and then this thing right because they will be asking questions on each and every point which you have put in your cv okay so don't put anything which you don't know suppose let's say if you are if you don't know and if you are confident that before you go to the uh, interview you will be learning it then you can put it suppose let's say you don't know tableau okay, okay yeah. or any of the visualization tools and then you know that and if you are confident that you will be able to achieve little bit of experience before you go to that interview then it's okay no harm okay. if you can justify basically if you can justify put it otherwise please don't you should know in and out each and every single letter which you have put in the cv okay so don't forget something you have written in the cv like let's okay. say i have done this project and then if you forget about it right that you have in your cv it will spoil your chances and then things uh, students will apply like loads of jobs every day i will be applying 10 jobs yeah. and then if you are applying for different types of positions like business analyst if somewhere you are applying as a developer somewhere you are applying as uh, this thing you will not know which cv you have applied yeah, yeah, okay yeah. Sure. okay so um, basically just make sure you know what you have put in the cv before you take the uh, call with the hiring manager okay and then 
um, tell me about yourself right i will not go too much detail into it because as i said uh, if you go through the channels which will be linked here they have uh, uh, one of the channels is from the hiring manager in pwc so he has given a very uh, detailed explanation of tell me about yourself and then there is one more lady so if you go through them you will be able to construct a very good tell me about yourself but okay the uh, only tip i will give you is keep it short concise punchy 3 minutes long not more than 3 minutes right. and then what they are trying to uh, find out here is in your cv which is of two pages okay yeah. what do you consider worthy enough to be told in those 3 minutes and then what are the things which i should know uh, to make a decision about yourself that you are suitable for this role okay so i'll give a very good example okay suppose like you have applied uh, i'll we'll take the same testing example so you have experience in testing you did masters in data science you applied for senior tester role or yeah. experienced tester role okay there is no point in going in detail or telling mentioning too many things about your masters and what you have did it in python and then what you have done in visualization etc etc because it is not relevant to the role they don't care right so don't tell anything which is not relevant you might have done 100 things okay in your career and then everything is great but only tell the top five things which are relevant to that role and one more tip maybe i'll give you uh don't start from like your childhood or something like that nobody is interested in your personal story okay just cut through cut, cut short everything uh before your graduation start like i uh, after i completed my graduation in in, in india i started working at an x company okay. you, if you start from that it will be good okay done so now you have told about yourself now the hiring manager might ask you probably like two to three questions see let's say he has introduced himself like for two to three minutes and then you have told yourself about like two to three minutes so this will definitely consume although i'm saying two to three minutes this will definitely consume 10 minutes yeah perfect yeah so now in that 20 minutes last five minutes is for you know he will ask you whether you have any questions or those okay. kind of things so in that 15 minutes he will ask you maximum three questions okay two to three questions they will mostly ask about your experience which is relevant to that role let's say um if you take the testing example again right they will ask you okay in that project you what have you done to do uh, when you didn't get agreement with uh, the developers how did you resolve it in that project or tell me about yourself uh, tell me uh, um a good example which have tested using selenium or something like that okay uh, in my case when i applied ui they asked me about my role uh, in deloitte then they asked me what is the approach you have taken so i told them they are they were uh, having trouble in implementing projects okay they are implementing although the uh, all the development work was completed uh, they are implementing only after 3 months me and my team have developed a methodology uh, which is agile so they then she asked me on the same example what is the approach you have taken to present it to the leaders so then we told how we did all those things so when you are telling some example okay you have to prepare for all the questions which can come in that okay like how if you talk to a friend and if you are explaining to him what kind of doubts he might get so you need to prepare all the answers for that okay and they will expect you to be prepared so if you are like thinking too much or this thing that might um, spoil your chances right and uh, just the basics like star approach whenever you are telling any answer tell them situation okay task and what is the approach once the hiring manager is happy he will tell that okay this uh, guy is good we can take him you can uh, proceed for the next round okay and there comes the last round and uh, be uh, be aware of the timelines right so one of the questions you can ask him when he says like uh, do you have any questions you can ask him how much time can i expect uh, the next phase or 
what is the process what are the next steps etc yeah i don't really suggest asking anything apart from that like i will always ask what are the next steps apart from that i i will not ask any questions uh because it is not so relevant so even with hr you can ask what are the next steps so that's that's the basic um, standard question and then like just to be on safe side don't ask anything else yeah okay um normally it will take 7 days for the next round and it might take 15 days uh if you don't hear anything uh, after a week follow up with them drop an email if you don't hear anything back after 15 days um then i would not say like you have been rejected but your chances are 50% less okay so you should start reconsidering you know some other jobs some companies are usually slow like ey to kgs to oh. respond uh but um minimum 15 days between each round so the last round usually with a usually will be with a very senior person like who has the authority to make the decision yes or no suppose let's say if you are talking about consulting companies it will be with the partner okay or a director so the partner is like who will report to the c suite you can say or kind of who is the director he is not c suite but who will report to who will ideally report to the local um, c suite okay we can we can keep it that way it, yeah. it, It, it's not necessarily, but let's say, let's just say that um, put it this way that he's a very senior person who has the uh, authority to make the decisions. Okay, and so it will be with him. Um, like always, trust to impress. That's one tip I will give you. Okay, so full suit or something like that, and then be confident. Um, and one thing, even on phone or even on. Um, what to say personal face to face always smile although they will not be able to see you um, that you are smiling but it will definitely make a difference uh, on the in the voice when you are smiling and then talking okay it it really makes a big difference and uh, so when you go to there okay and also one more thing i forgot to tell in all the interviews the first thing they will mention their name okay yeah uh, and uh, mostly in the email they will uh, tell you who is going to interview you okay always remember the name okay and then let's say uh, when you are ending the call or some, something like that or when they ask you uh, do you have any other questions so may i know what are the next steps suppose let's say if his name is paul may i know what are the next steps paul thank you so much for your uh, thank you so much paul for your time or yeah. something like that so it's uh, really important in i mean i don't know about others but when i was in india i was not so concerned like like i won't remember names uh, i'll just say thanks okay uh, but here when they are interviewing you will also find out like they will always try to after each and every question they will say sai can you tell me about um, oh yeah experience but they will not just say they will not just ask can you tell me about your, your experience yeah. they will uh, say your name so many times so that they will remember you so similarly if you also can uh, you know say their name wherever possible and then wherever it it is logical also yeah. uh, it will be good okay so remember that and then whenever you go there like it's just the basics i will not go into too much detail like firm handshake and all those kind of things these all these things you will get from those youtube to youtube channels yeah because they explained it better so that's why i don't want to repeat um and then say good morning whatever time it is just give the greetings and then say hi ball how are you how is everything going etc etc and then like they will usually ask you like some pep talk like did you find it difficult to come here or something like that okay so yeah maybe this one i will tell okay so they will definitely ask you in all the interviews they ask me did you find it difficult to get here or how did you come okay this is just to uh you know make you a little bit comfortable and then it is for some weird reason they will think you know you are not prepared for this question okay uh, so just prepare a default answer let's say if you are going to docs yeah it was all right i took the lowest it's it's uh, i mean since i'm from dublin i'm talking lower so if you are in cork or limerick just say 
yeah it's all right like uh, i stay near the bus and then like i took a bus and then it, it's half an hour something like that okay but um, just prepare something nice to say okay and um, again they will ask you tell me about yourself in the partner round and they will have their cv with them okay so no need to go through each and every point but again as i said you can replay the same thing which you have told in the phone interview the questions will be same okay mostly uh, like because the director has uh, and the hr manager would have already given them the feedback okay this guy has experience in testing okay this guy has experience in um, like project management this guy has experience in blah 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 okay and uh, what is your experience and what are the clients and all those things so they will have some Five to ten points. So yeah. based on those points, they will ask you questions. And the reason why I told uh, your CV is very important because they will not ask you a single question which is outside the CV. Okay. Suppose if you don't put Python on your CV, they will not ask a single question on Python. But if you mention it, they yeah. will definitely ask a question. Okay. That's why I told it. Uh, don't fake it. Okay. And then whatever. Um, you are writing in your cv the questions will be only on that okay, okay. and then uh, just bear in mind that this might be different for a pure software engineer role suppose like if you are applying for a full stack engineer okay or a um, cloud architect okay with five uh, plus years experience or something like that then obviously or if you are applying in amazon the questions will be obviously based on data structures and then you know yeah. it will be a lot more technical and all those kind of stuff yeah. i'm only talking about uh, consulting roles project management management consulting or testing or these kind of things yeah. okay because there is not much technical uh, and then it also doesn't make any sense asking too much technical questions tell me how will you code this in java spring framework or something like that or how will you test this in selenium they will not ask uh that much detailed questions here in ireland unlike in india okay but if you are talk if you are as i said if you are applying for pure java based roles or you know um like cloud based roles there will be like detailed questions on that perfect okay here they will just ask you what is the approach you have taken okay uh how did you test it okay so i have got this information from developer i went and analyzed this and then uh, that's how i arrived at this okay so just high level questions and okay. then you can uh, there will be high level so when i applied for this role in uh, project management um, they have asked me so what do you think uh, a role of pmo okay. in a project can you tell me like what, uh, what is the use of pmo in a project okay this is a very basic question so i said like okay pmo is the primary contact between the project team and the project manager um he is the go to person uh for all the project needs so if the project manager wants uh, whether we are on budget or not are we over spending we have 10 contractors have we overrun or something like that similarly uh, the project team if they want um whether this risk has been logged into the system or not uh, etc etc he is the middleman between the project manager and the development team so you have to keep it high level okay and if he wants they will definitely ask and then you can go into detail okay Perfect. so this is how you you have to answer all the questions and then if it is a scenario based question like let's say um um uh, then you need to take the star approach how did you solve a particular problem if they ask you then you have to uh, take the star approach but if it is a generic question uh, just keep it short and sweet Perfect. and then again they will ask you why did you apply for this role and as i said uh go through the same thing and the last and final question um is related to your salary okay so they will ask you so uh, what are your salary expectation it is very important to do your market research uh, when you are going for experienced roles for graduate roles um anyway the interview process is different although i told uh, we might will do a separate video i'll just touch upon it for graduate roles there is no negotiation okay yeah graduate role is nothing but it is a fresher role yes, okay zero negotiation there will always be a like fixed number and then you will get that package okay yeah. they will not even ask this question mostly yeah. okay but in some small companies like uh, when i say small companies uh, it's not sap or it's not 
um, Deloitte or PwC or Microsoft. It's a company which you haven't heard the name before. They might ask you a number. Uh, that is just because uh, they would be offering minimum salary. Like they might be offering thirty thousand, and if you are expecting, you know, um, forty thousand or forty-five thousand for a fresher, just because. Uh, you have good skills like you have done a lot of data science projects and you might be expecting you know uh, come on man i am uh, from ucd and then in india i am from iit uh, yeah. i should be getting 45000 i'm fresher so just to uh, make sure they can satisfy you or not some small companies might ask you this question for graduate roles but otherwise you'll not get this yeah. um, coming back to the point of experience roles so there are three things to consider uh, when uh, this question has been asked talk to someone in the company and understand how much they are paying for the current employees in the same designation or yeah. okay suppose let's say um, if you talk to somebody in ey and if you applied for senior let's take the um, testing thing itself just to be coherent okay so for going as a senior tester in deloitte okay mm -hmm. test engineer or master guard senior tester in master guard so ideally they will be giving so uh, maybe let's say you have 4 years of experience so they will be probably giving 50000 and that is the no, that is not the market rate but that is something which they are giving in the uh, their company yeah. and now the market rate okay how much other companies are paying for the same role probably 50 to 60000 okay and then the last thing is how much you want okay it doesn't mean that they are paying 50000 but it doesn't mean that they will give you 50000 okay yeah okay they might give you only 40000 yeah or they might give you 55000 okay so um, you need to have a minimum and a maximum so i will take when you apply for this job okay um, i will come to that in later but um, we will finish this first okay so when you apply for this job you would have thought Okay, if I get 40,000, that is enough. Okay, okay. Yeah. I will accept this role. After you have gone through multiple rounds, you are like, I am performing very good. Okay, let's ask 50,000. Okay, yeah. so and or maybe once you have talked to that guy and then you have uh, understood that in market they are paying 60,000. Okay, let's go for uh, 50,000 or something like that. Anyway, you cannot go more than market rate. Okay, yep. 40,000 is your minimum, although market is uh, 60. You might be thinking, okay, let's ask fifty thousand. So your your um, ballpark should be within these three numbers. Okay, minimum is forty thousand. In the maximum is sixty thousand. Okay, but don't I would suggest like let's say if the, for the current employer if they are getting fifty, don't put, don't go for the maximum sixty. Okay, ask fifty five. Yeah. Okay. So that thing, and then obviously they will uh, negotiate, and then uh, you will also negotiate a little bit. Okay. Uh, normally, I would not suggest uh, too much negotiating. Okay, if you want help with uh, negotiating the salary, uh, reach out to me on LinkedIn. I have uh, helped all my friends to go till uh, you know Oracle like sixty five thousand, and then in PwC also they negotiated this salary till seventy five thousand. So I can help you on that um, because I have done negotiation techniques in my masters. Um, I also have negotiated my Deloitte one year contract into full time role. So oh. I have experience in that. Um, so, anyway, so let's say now for a current employer, they are paying 50. Minimum, if they offer you 40, that uh, you will accept this role. Okay, 40. Yep. Market rate is 60. Yep. So now let's start with 55. So just say yep. uh, I have four years of experience and then I have talked to a couple of uh, people in the company. And then uh, I think um, I'll be happy if I get 55,000. Okay. Right. Just put it this way. Okay. So that will give them an idea that you already talked to the people. Okay. Then they cannot, uh, you know, bargain much. Okay. Um, if you have performed very well and then if they have the budget, they will not negotiate. Okay. They didn't negotiate for me in EY but they did in the law. So they will give 55. Otherwise they will negotiate. Let's say they will tell, uh, if they tell 45,000, no, we can only offer 45,000. Okay. Although it is above your listing, you can say 
you can negotiate one more time okay don't take it till the end okay then he will they will be frustrated so they told so you told 55 they told 45 then you just say uh, 45 is a bit too low like i would accept 50 okay then if he says 47.5 take it okay don't uh, do third time okay yeah so that's the thing anyway so this is the salary thing so the, the again and just to summarize the most important thing is you need to know how much you are willing to accept minimum and then you need to know how much they are offering in their company and you need to know what is the market rate Perfect. okay so that you can put uh, you can use these three numbers and then you can arrive at some figure okay and then the last thing is work permit okay um uh, okay just before going that work permit sometimes you might be in a tricky situation okay um in salary negotiation because either they you would have filled a number in the application form okay yeah the application form sometimes they'll put what is your salary expectations okay if you tell uh 40000 okay then in the last round if you ask 60000 if you are sure confident that okay i have performed very well and then if i ask 60000 uh it will not uh, spoil my chances go for it okay i would never say hey, settle for less uh but if you have any like you know at least 10% doubt don't stretch too much okay or sometimes they would hr would have asked you after the first round okay uh, uh, sai do you have any salary expectations okay i made this mistake Uh, i told them uh, in one of the companies my expectation is 40000 okay. okay and once the uh, interview is over they gave me a package of 47000 okay then i asked 50000 oh, okay yeah. then they said no <laughs> okay because you have see i already asked you you are uh, you said 40 since you have performed very good in the interview we are giving you 47 okay uh, now you are asking 50 it is not possible Okay. Yep. So you need to be a little bit clever. Okay. If you want to play safe, uh, in the um, let's say if they are allowing text uh, in the application form, just write industry standards. Okay. Okay. And in the call, if they ask you, uh, it is not so professional if you say industry standards. So uh, I would like to negotiate the salary once the interview process is over, if that's okay. okay. But anyway, uh, there are so many other techniques uh, how you can negotiate your salary, and then you know you can put back the questions to them when you have done your research. If you do, if you didn't get any numbers from anywhere, there are techniques how you can arrive at those numbers. So uh, all these are part of negotiation uh, um, strategy. So. if you want like when you get to that stage and reach out to me and i will help you okay, okay. so um, anyway so the last one as i said is work permit now ever 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 okay uh, take the uh, ask about work permit in uh, till the last stage okay okay i would say even in the last interview don't even mention it okay negotiate sa- negotiate your salary and everything okay if they bring out this topic okay then ask otherwise don't uh, ask uh, but um, again as i said every situation is different so um, there are certain companies uh, where you have to definitely ask um, this question but i would say don't ask till you got the offer okay Till you get the offer, don't ask this question. Uh, anyway, all the students, uh, most of the people who are seeing this video will be student will be will have one G. Okay, yep. so you are allowed to work full time on one G. So um, don't ask this question in the interview. Okay, that will put them off slightly. Once you have got the offer, saying that congrats, Neil, you have got the offer, and then we are offering you for like forty five thousand. Yeah. Okay. Then now you are hundred percent sure that you have got the job. then you tell then you can tell uh, i would like to accept the offer if you are giving me critical skills oh perfect okay so then you will then they are stuck because they already liked you they already uh, are about to give you the offer okay now you can ask about the work permit but before uh, if you ask the work permit if there is any other candidate who doesn't require work permit okay 
they will prefer them okay, okay? Uh, because of so many other reasons okay anyway uh, why i am asking why i am telling this because the hr and the hiring manager might have forgot okay or might have missed that they need you need visa okay yeah. although most of them will remember hr will definitely remember but the manager who is taking the decision he will be interviewing so many people doing 100 things so he would have forgot that you require this thing so he liked you and he said to hr okay i am the, i i want this guy yeah okay yeah so now if you mention that to him then a doubt will get created in his mind do i need to take this guy or not uh, again we need to process the work permit then he will ask hr okay this guy needs work permit do we have any other candidates who doesn't have work permit perfect okay so it's better to ask uh, once you have got the offer but again as i said uh, everybody situation is different okay and um, every company uh, works differently okay i have seen the cases where my friends worked with some of the big companies okay like hubspot okay uh, i didn't maybe that's a one off case i didn't want to use that name uh, because the video will be public anyway but anyway it's it's a real incident so i don't i don't care uh, so they used up uh, two years of vanji and they didn't sponsor him or sponsor her so she had to go back to india so um, there are certain companies whom i know of where where you should be um, anyway the mistake is on both sides she also know that uh, her uh, second year of uh, 1g is going to expire so she would have uh, pursued other opportunities she would have applied elsewhere or something like that and they would also have clearly told her we are not going to sponsor so the mistake is on both sides but you can handle the situation very better uh, in a better way okay so if you are in the second year of uh, your 1g and then if you would like to negotiate with your employer about your work permit uh, reach out to me and i can help you on how to start those discussions and then how to uh, get those work permits etc right okay. uh, but anyway as i said so ideally ask after you got the offer and in some cases you need to ask up front okay so depending on the companies you need to take uh, you need to decide which approach you need to take so yeah that's it i mean thank you very much for your time i mean uh, people will get a lot of information from this particular thing and they will i will just put down your linkedin profile in description and even yeah. that uh, both youtube channel in the description so that people can just uh, visit that yeah. channel even so yeah uh, that's it for this video i mean thank you very much for your time and uh, i will contact you soon for uh, more upcoming things thanks thanks so much for your time as well